Hello, and welcome back to Diecast Graveyard. My name is Paul. We got a special treat for you here today. We are going to restore a Hot Wheels Ramblin' Wrecker. Now this car, or truck in this case, was produced in 1975, and it used the body from the Backwoods Bomb Camper. This truck uses a metal body. But what's really cool about this one is that the decals on the side, this obviously was designed by Larry Wood, but the phone number on the side was actually his phone number. So in later editions, they wound up blocking it out so you couldn't see it because I guess he was getting all kinds of phone calls. So they had to change his phone number. Let's go ahead and take the car apart. It's got two posts that you have to drill out, one in the front and of course one in the back. Now you have to pop out the windshield because it's stuck up in there pretty good. The hook system in the back is held on by a little plastic tab and you have to work it out with a screwdriver and then push it backwards. There you go. Now this is in pretty good shape. I've seen them where the toe section is snapped off and you can get replacements for these. There's plenty of people out there with 3D printers that are making these things up. Now in this particular one the base and the wheels are in really good shape so I really don't see a need to replace the wheels on these. Now the windshield on the other hand, we're going to have to sand that down because it's uh, pretty scratched up and looks nasty. Decals of course are going to have to all be redone. Yeah, it's looking pretty tired. So we'll repaint that and we'll replace the decals. We'll polish up the base, touch it up with a Molotov chrome pen. Now some of the vehicles in the future that were made off of this same base are interchangeable. So if you were to use a metal base off of, say, this van to modernize your car, then uh, you could use a metal base versus a plastic base. Just something for you to think about there. Looking good. Let's get it in the paint stripper. Here we'll put it in the citrus strip. Now this is older paint and it's enamel uh, opaque paint so it should come off pretty easy. I need to put a little bit more citrus strip in this uh, container, it's running low. But you can keep reusing this stuff, as long as it keeps stripping paint you can reuse it. Make sure you get it coated on the inside and the outside. Get rid of all that old paint. That's looking good. Let's let it set for a while. We got it out of the stripper. Now since we're going to use an opaque paint, we don't have to get into polishing it out. All we have to do here is just make sure that the body is smooth. Make sure you get your hard to reach areas first. Inside the fender wells and underneath the doors, etc. But you still have to put those light tack coats on. You don't want to put it on too heavy because you'll definitely get runs. Just take your time. Paint your surfaces and make sure you keep rotating the car as you paint because you don't want it to let it sit in one place too long. Put a nice light coat on, let it set. And then, like I said, just keep rotating the car as you paint. That's starting to look nice. That uh, shine from the enamel starting to come through. Once we get it painted, we're going to let it sit overnight. Let that harden up. That's good. Let's go ahead and put it in the cabinet. Waiting for the paint to dry. It's time to work on the windshield. I took some sandpaper to the front of the windshield and smoothed it down quite a bit. Now we're going to take some of the Meguiar's plastic polish and we're going to polish that up. Just try and do this by hand. If you try and buff it out with a buffing wheel, sometimes it tends to get too hot and melt unless you keep the RPMs on your Dremel very low. Polish it up as best you can, and then later on we'll hit it with the gauzy. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click on that little bell to be alerted to future videos that come out.
It's shining up, but we're definitely going to have to put it in the gauzy to make it that much better. Yeah, I think we can do a little bit better than this, so we'll definitely have to coat it. Let's go ahead and move on. Here we got the truck all painted. We're going to go ahead and put these decals on. Now originally when I got the decals from Second Chance Red Lines, they were a little bit too small. I contacted Vince at Second Chance Red Lines and he immediately sent me out a brand new pair that were adjusted properly. So hats off to Vince at Second Chance Red Lines. He stands behind his product. I had already ordered these months ago when I was going to do this truck. My friend Kenny Terry, who does mostly all my decals, I would have called him first, but I already had these in stock. That's looking pretty good. Now, there's the phone number I was telling you about. Apparently, it wasn't supposed to be released with the phone number on the side of the truck. But when Mattel printed it, they went off the prototype and printed the phone number. Well, at the time, that was Larry Wood's actual phone number at his house, and I guess he kept getting phone calls. That's looking nice. All right, we got all of our parts together. The truck's been clear coated. That's looking good. The base is looking good. All we had to do was clean it up. We're reusing the old wheels. That's looking nice. We got the windshield back out of the gauzy. That looks awesome. The plastic piece in the back. We cleaned it up with, with some soap and a toothbrush. That looks good. And this is what we started with. A Ramblin' Wrecker from Hot Wheels made in 1975. This one here is just an old classic that uh, no collection is complete without having this tow truck. It's uh, a definite staple in the collecting community. This one here has had some paint missing. The plastic was a little bit beat up, but we cleaned that up. The base looked good, we cleaned that up though, and we repainted it, and we put some new decals on it. Definitely looking great there. And this is what we got to. A beautifully restored Hot Wheels Ramblin' Wrecker. The paint job looks fantastic. The decals look really great. The windshield's all nice and shiny again. The wheels look fantastic. And the back end and the plastic, that looks fantastic too. What a fun time this was to restore this car. Now you folks can do this too. Almost all the aftermarket parts that I get for these cars and trucks that I do on these Hot Wheels come from the Red Line shop. Contact John, let him know what your needs are, and he'll take care of you. His customer service is second to none. He gets the product out quickly, and his products that he, ha that he sells are fantastic so get a hold of John at the Redline shop at www.redlineshop.com where Redlines come to life what a fantastic restoration this was I really enjoyed this build I'd like to thank my patreon members the Grim Reaper levels not like the Grim Leapers like I said a little bit ago <laughs> always get support from my wife here mortician level guys I'd uh, especially like to thank the Air Warrior Coffee Company with the giveaway in the recent uh, Sweet 16 giveaway. Grave Diggers, don't forget Double B's Customs there on his Facebook page. My hearse drivers, check out Jim Silva's YouTube page. Does some fantastic builds. Thank you so much for joining me here today for this Hot Wheels Ramblin' Wrecker. We got a lot more videos coming up, and if there's something that you would like to see, Please leave a comment down below and let me know and we'll do the best we can to get to it. This is Paul with Diecast Graveyard. Cheers.